Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just looking at this Grundy Transistor 5000 satellite. Now these have a power supply which is rather like a PP9 size with the same sort of connector and it goes in, in space in here. Now, recently, Radio Cruncher, who does excellent live streams on uh, Sundays and is well worth a watch, had the same radio and uh, found the capacitors, there's two capacitors in, in these, were really, really bad on his. Um, and it looked like I was going to have to do mine. So anyway... Basically, I, I uh, strip this down, and it's all shielded inside. It's very difficult to take apart. And uh, I found one capacitor was remarkably good still, the, the large one in there. But um, there's a small capacitor in there, and that was quite quite leaky. So uh, it was worth taking apart anyway. Um, but further investigations, I realised... That the rectifier is not silicon one it's it's a selenium one so uh, I thought why what should we do is it worth continuing with it as it was um, now originally this had switches on here that you could switch between nine volts and I think it was six and a half volts or maybe seven and a half volts, and this mains voltage could be switched between 220 and 110. Now, I'm never going to use it on 110 volts, and I can't envisage that I would ever use it on anything other than 9 volts, because I'm going to use it with that radio. So what I've decided to do, and what I have done, was to take the original design, which was this, and instead re completely rewire it to a more modern design using a voltage regulator chip 7809 now there's a transformer and it has the two windings which were switched here so you could either have them in series for 220 volts or in parallel the two one is in parallel for 110 now since i'm not going to use it on 110 volts i was able to remove all this switching here and just join the two wires which were red and blue join these two together rather like they are joined together on the secondary there uh, um, cover the uh, joint with uh, heat shrink tubing and then tuck, tuck this safely out of the way so that it can't short to anything. So now all I've got, I've got is the mains coming in through a fuse there, through the two windings, which is one on here, shown as one, and through another fuse there. So I've still got the two fuses in circuit, um, but it's now just uh, simply wired straight in. And I've still got this uh, peculiar lamp type switch, um, which is that, which is actually original because it's on all of these that I've seen so far. Um, so that was the main side of this. Now, the secondary side of this, I uh, again wanted to completely redesign this or rebuild this. I don't say I designed it really, I just cribbed the design. It's very simple. Um, but this rectifier is a selenium one and they can fail quite badly they, with bad egg smell apparently and um, this one being 60 years old. Uh, I kind of thought no we won't chance it so we'll replace that with diodes, silicon diodes. I'll put the larger capacitor in there and then 
all this circuit here won't be needed because this is all this switching was to put a different bias on the base to give you the two different voltages and there's a diode there for reference um, so there's also a resistor across there which drains the capacitors when it's uh, turned off I've left that on there this is uh, I haven't shown it on the other diagram but it's still there um, so what I've come up with instead is this so I've used four IN4007 diodes there and instead of the capacitor specified in this original drawing I've put 1000 microfarads 50 volt one in there um, because it, the modern capacitors are so much smaller than the old ones put a higher voltage rating in and I hope it will actually last a bit better you actually get about 18 volts across here so I could have got away with the 25 volt one um, and these little two little capacitors here 10 nanofarads I've actually put a tiny piece of various strip on the uh, pins to the regulator and they're soldered onto that so they are right close to the pins and then I've put the 220 microfarad across the output here and that small resistor which is still across there um, and then the, there's a fuse which is in this line that's still there um, this, this is as was so I haven't had to alter the secondary wiring at all um, and when I tested it out yes I've got 18 volts here um, it's well within the spec of this to cope with dropping the 18 volts to 9 um, these and this is rate, are rated at 1 amp so this shouldn't be drawing 1 amp um, I'm sure it'll be okay I mean I've had it running for a while now quite loud and it's working perfectly fine and it only runs warm it doesn't get hot so uh, anyhow when I reassembled it of course it meant that with these windows where the switches were needed to be filled so uh, there's card inside there and basically I've just written on there that it's 9 volts DC and 230 volts AC which is the uh, UK nominal voltage nowadays and uh, it now gives me the uh, correct 9.9 .9 volts, um, sorry, 8.9 volts output. Um, and I say I've had it running, so it's, uh, it's just, uh, I know the purists won't like it that I've redesigned it, but I thought, well, let's have something more reliable. Let's get rid of the bits I don't really need because I'm not going to, uh, to switch the voltages and, uh, uh, it took quite a while because it was it was not the circuit, which was very simple indeed. It was just uh, working out how to uh, assemble a completely different circuit on the same circuit board. But uh, I thought that might be of interest to some people. So uh, that's what I've been doing today. So thanks for watching and goodbye.